Alright, welcome back to Phoenix Wright, Trout and Jubilations. Last time. It's fucking Larry, man. He's. He's crying. He's, yeah, pretty much. Anyway, it's court time. I'm not saving. Court! Why do you never save? Because I don't wanna. February 9th, 9.47 a.m., District Court, Defendant Lobby Number 1. Oh my, Mr. Lori feels that way about me? We told her. Apparently. Apparently? He doesn't wear your real secret at all. This is no time to be embarrassed. I'm sorry. I'm just hardly accustomed to that sort of thing. We're not, in any case. Whatever is what he saw on the night of the incident. Mark me words, I'll drag it out of him. Does that mean Mr. Loris is the witness today? No. Move that nun. I'll be the first to take the stand. Sister Bikini. She claims you've seen the very instant when you carried out the crime. I just want to ask you one last time. It really wasn't you who killed Miss Elise Totem, correct? That is correct. It wasn't me. Very well, then. Um, Mr. Edgeworth? Yes? You're a prosecutor, aren't you? Are you sure about this? If your true identity is revealed... Don't worry. I've taken the necessary steps. You have? Iris. The prosecutor's job to doubt people. But right now... I'm a defense attorney. The defense attorney's job is to believe in people and believe into the bitter end. That's what a friend of mine once told me. Mr. Edgeworth. I may pass judgment on me from the defendant's chair. Be the other one to decide whether or not I'm able to do the task I've been entrusted. Very well, sir. I leave my defense in your capable hands. Alright. Here we go. February 9th, 10 a.m. Just court. Courtroom number 7. There's no prosecutor. Yes! <laughs> Very excited. Alright, um... <clears throat> court is now in session for the trial of Sister Iris and Hazakura Temple. I said and. Oh well. Defense is ready, Your Honor. <laughs> the prosecution is not there. The defense does, appear, does indeed appear to be ready. However, the same cannot be said for the prosecution in this case. Indeed. Not sure I'd like such blatant waste of this court's time. In the prosecutor's here, I can only mean that the prosecutor has no confidence in their ability to prove their case. It would seem that this case is already over before it had a chance to begin. I'm ready to announce my verdict this time. Court finds the defendant. Objection! <laughs> <laughs> well, well. Prosecution stands ready. All right. And you are. Francesca von Karma, prosecuting prodigy. Von Karma, you say? Per perchance you want to be a relationship with your prosecutor, Manfred von Karma. Legends are a thing of the past. I am a Von Karma. That is all. On a special dress, I flew in today for the purposes of prosecuting this case. You, you did? And then you must be quite a big shot, eh? By the way, Mr. Edgeworth. Yes, Your Honor? I'm almost certain that I've seen you somewhere before. Or am I just imagining things? You look very much like a prosecutor I met once. Nope. I believe you're imagining things, Your Honor. Miss Von Karma, do you have anything to say? There's no such weaklings as this man among those at the prosecutor's office. There, there isn't. But I'm sure, once before in this courtroom... Ah! I told you! There is no such weakling! 
What is that? A whip? I'm not sure I care for such a thing in my courtroom. But Bailiff, remove that whip and... Hold it! I have no objection to the whip. You, <laughs> you don't? Plus, you can wield a whip or drink 17 cups of coffee. But there's still only one truth. And that's what I stand here to prove today. This promises to be interesting, Miles Edgeworth. I had expected to face Phoenix right here today. But looking at you now... Maybe this is what I have been waiting for all this time. Miles Edgeworth, I will not allow this chance to crush you. Slip through my fingers. I see you brought your flair for the... His, his chronic? Sure. <laughs> sure. <laughs> Let me add things I'm not sure about. People acting brazenly in my courtroom. Oh, ah. The stage is set. Now continue with the proceedings, Your Honor. Very well. Ms. Von Kroma, please give an outline of this case. A little whipping is possible. No. Oh. <laughs> Never. The murder victim is the famed... The famed picture, picture book author, Miss Elise Doden. The body was found in the hospital for attempt in the courtyard. She had been stabbed through the torso by a ceremonial sword from a golden staff. The sword in this picture is the weapon in question, correct? Very well. The court steps is in the photo in the, of the crime scene. There is no mistake. This was the doing of Sister Iris. After all, witness to her crime. Very well. Please bring this witness to the stand. So it begins. My first and last trial as a defense attorney. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> witness, state your name and occupation, please. Well, hold on here. I'm not sure that I care. Uh, I'm not sure if I care about this for at all. Where this? Please stand up nice and straight. <laughs> Aww. <laughs> if I crawl correctly, there are a few milk crates in the defendant's lobby for witnesses with bad backs. Bailiff, have a crate for this poor lady, please. There we go. What can I eat? <laughs> Once again. Your name and occupation, please. Little old me, well, I'm the head, head non of Azkari Temple on Eagle Mountain. Name is Bikini. You got it? Bikini. Now, uh, nice to meet everyone. But you don't appear to be wearing a bikini right now. Wah! The courtroom is a garden of holy judgment. That's, uh. <laughs> okay. Those with lechery in their hearts should leave this sanctuary at once. You want me to leave? Yes. Where to get your bikinis in a twist? Let me tell you, my sight to behold in summer. Oh, <laughs> <my. laughs> in any case, witness, really you saw the crime take place on the night in question. That's right. I was hardly believe it myself, to be honest. There's no way that a little iris could do anything like that. Let's hear you of the Satan. First, tell us the boot your movements that night, eh? Night of the murder. That night I was helping an acolyte with the trading in the inner temple, but... Well, as you can see, my back legs act up. Violently. So the fire is to help the acolyte and return to the Hazakurai temple. There's no bath in, your, in the inner temple, you see. I need a nice long soak. The after I had finished, just as I was heading back. Soon I saw it! Mm hmm. It was simply coincidence that you found yourself returning to Hazakori Temple. Yes, you could say that. If I hadn't been in such much pain, I would have stayed at the Inner Temple. Sounds like a pretty important statement she just made. There's only one problem with this testimony that I can see. And you're not about to fall at the first hurdle, now are you, Miles Edgeworth? Ms. Edgeworth, please be under cross examination. Night of the murder. 
Okay. So, helping with the training. Act up. I guess we'll get specifics on this. Hold it. The crime took place in the courtyard, correct? When you go from my room to the main hall, you have to take a winding hallway from which you can see the courtyard. That's right. In other words, it was pure coincidence that the witness saw the crime taking place before her eyes. There was no complicated setup in this case. That certainly seems to be true. Indeed, only one problem with this testimony. If I can clearly point out what it is, then I can mend the quantify. Just how good this man's memory and observation skills are. So we're attacking an old person's memory again. What the heck? Well, she's not as old as Miss Oldbag, so it's okay. Or the old man, more recently, but. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. they keep keep being like, there's a problem, but I'm not really seeing it. I see it right here. Is this it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That, I okay. swore she never went yeah. to the inner gotcha. temple. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Yeah, her testimony. Gotcha. Objection! Witnesses have to undergo their own trials, I'm afraid. Trinity's fate rests on their powers of observation and memory, after all. Well, well, well. Don't worry, I'm more than up to the task. I'm a woman of faith, after all. The head honcho of Asgari Temple. In that case, Miss Hancho, I'd like to explain something for me. The discrepancy between your testimony and that of the defendant, Iris. She claims that after ringing the lights out bell, she went back and stayed in her room. Which means she did not go to the inner temple at all. N n no, she said that. A defendant or a witness? Who is more likely to lie, do you suppose? The defendant is simply lying to cover her back. Objection! But that's completely illogical. The murder is committed in the, cor the courtyard of Hazakurai Temple. Claiming that she went to the inner temple would make for a much better alibi. That's true. But that is odd. Whatever the reason, I can't believe that she would lie. Hmm, she just need to have honest eyes. Okay. <laughs> All people lie. That is my belief. Well, I'm the one being whipped in here. Because you deserve it. <laughs> anyway. Oh. <laughs> Do you have the, the, the witness or the defendant have any reason to lie? Which means, must call your memory into question. Dear, dear, dear. You're older than me and yet you want to play that game, do you? <laughs> ah, well, that is exactly when I... Memory was perfect. Crystal clear. Especially in winter. Then, miss, we'll just do it in this cross examination, eh? Mr. Edgeworth, if you're going to question the memory of the witness. You'll need to show more, me a more decisive piece of evidence. Understood, Your Honor. I was naive to think that alone would do the trick. And please add your accounts of Boot Iris to the testimony. Let's return to the cross examination. Okay. Yeah, that's not true. Uh, yeah. She no gave point. away her hood. Yep. Objection! Witness, let's get one thing straight. The she gave her hood to write, like, right after dinner, I was pretty sure. Yeah. That's mainly what I thought. Yep. The defendant who you claimed to have met. She was wearing this demon warning hood, correct? Of course! That's a very important piece of clothing, I'll have you know. Waha! Waha ha ha ha! Wait a minute. Objection! <laughs> Wait a minute! I'll hold it right there! Why do you have that? That's the question of the day, now isn't it, Miss Von Karma? Let me know that this hood was given to someone as a gift that night, before the lights up bell was rung. What? You know where I'm going with this, don't you? 
The witness had seen the defendant as she claims. The defendant had been wearing this very hood. Well, well, well. It's not a bad feeling at all, exposing contradictions like this. I understand that happy look in right space every time he does it. Order! Order in the court! What is this if something... I don't know. Sister! This hood. You have spare ones around the temple, don't you? Spares... well... I don't think they make too many of them. I see, a stockpile. Surplus of hoods, huh? Each one isn't giving one hood. This should be the only hood Iris owned. Hmm, this is quite strange. Ah. If there was a surplus of hoods, then she could have worn one of those. There is no contradiction here. Hmm. Try to break this to you, Miss Von Karm, but you won't get away with that easily. Experiences such as this will sow seeds in a human heart. Seeds of doubt. Witness, well, I don't wish to call your testimony into doubt. You must give very detailed with precision. I'm not sure I'm comfortable going along with this. Sister, you shall continue with your testimony. Tell us what you saw after finishing your bath on your way back to the inner temple. The seeds of doubt are spreading in the judge's heart. They seem a little more stimulation to bear fruit. Contradictory stimulation. After my bath. This is about around 11, and then I should return to the inner temple. So I was walking back, I heard a noise from the courtyard, I took a look, and... Iris was all mystically... with that sword of all things! Miss Gleese was staying in the corner room, chased out of the courtyard. This having a son must have occurred after she was pushed out of her window. You saw the truly terrible sight, didn't you? I was in your place. It wouldn't have been much, much like... <laughs> Mr. Von Karma with Miss Redworth in two in court. It'd be seeing it fall from this very chair. Or, well, something like that. T this judge. His imagination is about as vivid and creative as Detective Gumshoe. I would look the fool if I commented on such foolishness. Anyway, this case is mine, Miles Edgeworth. Calling everyone by their full name. Can you do something about that habit of yours? <laughs> Pretty sure Phoenix said the same thing. That's true. And he does it with Phoenix anyway. So who's he to talk? Yeah. of logic. That's what I'd like to say, anyway. Oh, please do! My brain is something else, especially in winter. However, I think you're overlooking one thing. Miss Von Karma, would you like to be so kind to take another look at the autopsy report? The autopsy report? The victim did fall from a height of 10 feet. However, this fall was after she was killed. Ah! The that's right! It was after death right here! The scene that witnesses claim to have seen is contradictory. The defendant stabbed and killed the victim there in the courtyard. How did the victim then go on to take a 10 foot fall? Ah! Order! Order! The victim was killed and then fell. If this is the case. Then the victim must have been killed in a room. Don't you agree? That that is the logical conclusion. Yes, that that's right. The victim must have been stabbed by the defendant in her own room. And then she was thrown out of her window down into the courtyard below. Uh, uh. The window wasn't broken or anything. Oh, here's, of a... hmm? here's the other thing too. Why would why would uh why would Iris remove the Shishishido and then carry it in through the main hall up to Elise Dotum's room and then stab her with it? And then there, push her out the window and then go stab her again. Weapons. Like, what? 
just it's more stabbed her with a kitchen knife. Like, come on. Yeah, that's true. It's more taking it and then stabbing her in the room and then pushing her out the window and then going outside and stabbing her again. It's like, come on. Yeah, that's weird. Too. Were any signs of a struggle in Mrs. Totem's room? She was stabbed with a sword. That would leave a blood stain. Wouldn't you agree? Well, Miss Von Cairo, was there any blood? <laughs> wow. No traces of blood were found in the victim's room. Maybe it just caused traces of blood to be found on my glorious pay playoff beard. What? What is with this playoff beard bullshit? <laughs> what? I don't know. He said that in the other case too. Something he about did. his playoff beard would be covered in mud or some shit. Oh uh, yeah, I don't know. Weirdo. Oh. However, there's no blood in the room. You claim that. Wow. I'm sure there's no need for me to go over this. As I'm sure your honor is well aware of when a stab wound would pro or of when a stab wound produces the most blood. It produces the most blood. Very little blood is actually lost at the moment of the blade's insertion. It's when you remove it. Yes. You want to talk about when the most blood would be lost from a body? That would be when the blade is removed. Indeed. Weapon's still in place. That's like a lid on the wound. That's true. If the weapon's still in the body, there wouldn't be much bleeding. Probably a reasonable line of thinking. We have come to a conclusion then. The victim was thrown out of the window with the sword still in place. This removes all of the contradictions. Uh not really. Not really. But good enough. Good enough. Good enough for now. Anyway, until next time.